Hi there, happy hump day. It's Wednesday. Hope you're having an amazing week. So, would you think, would you classify your leadership as good leadership, effective leadership? Are you on the rails or off the rails? You know, it can be easy as a leader to lull yourself into a false sense of security, to think that you've got this leadership thing nailed. But sadly, you haven't. The best leaders are the leaders that open themselves to challenge. They recognize they don't have the license on being right. They recognize that they have bias because there are just assumptions and expectations about how they view the world. They know that even though our brain is amazing, our brain is full of bias because we construct a version of how we see the world based on experiences, based on things that we've seen and things that we've done. So what I'm gonna give you is six warning signs, six warning signs Perhaps your leadership is failing to be as good as you would like it to be. Number one, that you've stopped being willing to change. You know, it's really easy to get stuck into your ways. We get comfortable. We get into certain patterns of behavior. We have leadership habits. And you can also think that the traits that got you to where you are now are the traits that will carry you forward. But often that's not the case. Because when you think about it, the world is changing, the working world is changing, and therefore the skills, the talents, what you've got that has got you to where you are now may not be what you need to take yourself forward. And I love the work of Robert Keegan and Lisa Lay, and they talk about how one of the crucial failure points for organizations when they're trying to change is the fact that the leader doesn't think that they need to change. It's that case of, oh, no, 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 we don't need to change. Those people need to change. So when you're expecting things to change around you, the first person to check is yourself. Number two, that you're surrounding yourself with sick hands. It'd be great to have people around you who agree with you all the time and say yes. But when you're a leader, you need people around you who will challenge you. You need people who are going to say, I don't think that's going to work or actually, I don't think that's a good idea. You need the diverse perspectives. You need people around you who think differently, process information differently to you. Number three, you see yourself as the smartest person in the room. This can be really easy to do. And yet if you look back through the histories of many great companies that are no longer around, often, the downfall can be traced to the hubris and the arrogance of the senior leaders because they have a fixed mindset and they think, I know everything. I don't need to learn anything more. I'm not going to take on board feedback. In contrast, the most effective leaders, they question, they challenge, they push the boundaries. They know they don't have the license of being right. And if they're sitting there and they're thinking that they're the smartest person in the room, They either need to shift rooms or find other people who join that room and join the debate and the conversation. Number four, that you refuse to hire people that are smarter than you. You know, we all know the criticality of getting right people and right roles, but it can feel a little bit uncomfortable to have someone around you who intellectually might be superior to you, who might know more than you do. And yet when you're in a leadership role, often it can be impossible to know everything. The best leaders, the smart leaders, find people around them that complement what they're bringing to the table. And that way you end up with more knowledge, not less knowledge. You know, it was Bill Gates who said, the key for us, number one, has always been hiring smart people. Number five, you're the last to hear bad news. If you're sitting at work and the only news that ever hits your desk is good news or news and data that's been highly sanitized, it's a time to get worried. 
Because if people are fearful of telling you what's really going on, that means there's a huge heap of problems around. And one, they're really worried about how you're going to react to that news. You need people feeling comfortable to tell you what it's really like, what's working, what's not working. And number six, you play favorites. Favorites with your team members. There's an in-group, there's an out-group, and it's really clear who's in which group. You know, this is hard, it can be really easy. Sometimes we naturally gravitate to certain people, but when you are treating people differently, that's unfair. That sets a standard for your type of leadership, but also means that you're missing out on making and enriching your life by deepening connections with people around you who perhaps think differently to you, who somehow are challenging you, which is why you find it harder to spend time with them. You know, the best leaders, they recognize that everyone is unique and brings something to the table. That's what you wanna do, is help inspire the people around you to bring their best to the table every single time. So that was six. My question for you is which of those six apply to you? All of them? Maybe a few? Maybe a little bit of elements of each? Because once you've sat back and identified, then you're in a position to do something about it. Lots to think about. Take care, have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next week.